back. Again, my name is Chris Miskaitis. I'm an application engineer with Oriental Motor. And right now we're going to talk about application requirements that you might have for your stepping motor and drive. And then what solutions Oriental Motor has to provide. So here's a couple application requirements for motor and drive. So first, what if we have a high duty cycle? Um, so typically, step motors are only made for about a 50% duty cycle. After that, the motors might get too hot, um, right around that range. So we typically recommend about 50% of a duty cycle. But if we use something, one of our newer products called the AR, it's a high efficiency type system, um, that we can run up to 100% duty cycle. So the take a look at this product. It is a low loss alpha step. So alpha step is our our brand that um, is closed loop. It has a resolver built in the back of the motor uh, to close that loop. And this one specifically is a low loss, so we'll have continuous duty. Um, we Again, we'll have that closed loop with the resolver. Uh, the torque's going to be equal then or better than what the Alpha Step series is. And then we'll also have very smooth motion um, for low speed vibration because we're going to we're going to use what's called a smooth drive with this AR series. We'll also have better accuracy about uh, plus or minus 3 arc minutes um, for most of the ARs and then plus or minus 4 for the AR46. So if we take a look at the motor temperature, this is really going to be dependent on how long a step motor can run for. Once we hit about 100 degrees Celsius on the outside case of the motor, the motor is going to start, after that, it'll start burning up windings. So the alpha step we'll see in that red range, we're getting up in that 90 to 100 degrees Celsius range, where the AR has 40% less power consumption, so we can use it for higher duty cycles. And we'll see that one's in this blue range here, the, you know, maybe 40 to 45 or 50 degrees Celsius range. So much cooler temperatures. Um, that's going to equate to longer uh, duty cycles, also longer life of the motor. So a couple examples here. Number one, we ran the motor. Um, so after 40 minutes at 50% duty cycle, and the ambient temperature was 26 degrees Celsius. At this point, the temperature was not saturated, meaning if we ran them longer, they would get hotter. So the AR got up to 59 degrees Celsius. This is AR66AA. Uh, compare that to the AS66AAE. So the same frame size, uh, similar torques out. That one got up to 96 degrees Celsius. So we really wouldn't be able to run that for a higher duty cycle than 50% because it would just get too hot and uh, windings could potentially burn up. Now, example number two is only comparing ARs because we are running it continuously. Uh, so the AS would not be able to run continuously, um, so we're not able to compare. But we'll see AR46, AR66, and AR69, we're going to get lower than 100 degrees Celsius. So that means that we can continuously run these motors. So let's see a 90, 82, 99 degrees Celsius, uh, much much higher efficiency than a standard step motor, so we can run them continuous. And that's going to equate to some, some cost savings as well. So we'll see, based on the speed range that we're at, we can get up to about a 70% reduction in power input. Now, it's not always 70%. That looks to be right around 1,000 RPM. But even if we're at 2,000 or 3,000 or, or 4,000 RPM, we'll see a pretty significant reduction in the power input that we have to to use this motor. Uh, this was specifically looking at the AR and the AS69. Uh, we'll see that the main changes with the AR were to uh, the materials used. So about 90% or greater than 90% of the losses of the step motor were due to what are called iron losses. So in order to overcome that, we made a couple changes. Uh, lower loss steel is used. Uh, we used a thinner gauge for the laminations. We also increased the electrical resistance by alloying the, the silicon and the aluminum. We used a higher grade of the, the steel so that we, uh, we were able to remove some of the impurities. Also, they were stress-free, so there's no deformation after the, the final annealing. 
And uh, lastly, we'll see here that we use a new fasting method for the rotor and the stator laminations. So we'll change how they were uh, how they were fastened together, and that actually helped so that some of the loss was eliminated. Next, what if we need a closed loop uh, requirement? So one option would be to use the AR that we just discussed. Another option would be to use the alpha step um, that I, I mentioned a little bit, which uses the resolver built in the back. So a resolver is basically a rotary electrical transformer. Um, it's going to measure the amount of degrees, and how it's going to do that is based on the induction of the winding. So depending on where that, uh, that metal piece is in these windings, we're going to use that relationship, um, use some equations, do a little bit of math, and we can determine where we're at on 360 degrees. So our alpha step and AR systems, they all use that resolver in the back. There's a couple different types of alpha step motor drive or motor drive and controller solutions that we have. Um, number one is just a pulse input. So we would input pulse and direction from a PLC or from another um, controller or pulse generator. So we'll see here that we have AC input power supply uh, drives, also DC power. And the way that it's set up here, we would need the motor and then the drive and we would have an external pulse generator. And then probably a, some sort of programmable controller um, to tell our system when to start. Next, we're going to have our uh, built-in type controller. So these are only offered an AC input, but what it does is has the, the drive and the controller built into one box. So we have the motor and then the drive controller, and then that can then be connected to a PLC or something to tell it when to start. So our alpha step product line gets coupled with lots of different types of motion products. So first we'll see the motors over here with and without a gear, uh, taper hobs, planetary, harmonic gears, IP65 rated step motors, also some actuators. So we'll see a rotary actuator here, also some linear actuators, uh, another linear actuator here that's compact, and then different drives that are also available, AC input drives, DC input drives, uh, built-in controller with this one. Uh, and then this final one here is going to be, uh, it's called our ASX, has the motor, the drive, and the controller uh, built all in one. So it's built right in the back of the motor there. Another application requirement might be a compact drive. So take a look at a couple options here. One is called our DS drive, very compact. It can be mounted directly onto a circuit board. So there's going to be pins on the bottom of here that can be directly um, integrated into a circuit board. We'll see that it's very compact, 34 millimeter in length, 15.8 millimeters wide, and then 30 millimeter height. So very compact uh, type drives here. But they are, they are specifically made to be integrated into a circuit board. Uh, another option would be uh, new Pentagon bipolar chipsets. So if we want to make a new Pentagon bipolar drive, uh, the ones that go with the 0.72 and 0.36 degree type motors, we do have the chipsets available um, that you'd be able to make your own drive. So we'll have the control logic ICs and then also the MOSFETs. Finally, a um, couple compact drives that are more complete solutions. You wouldn't have to integrate them or make your own drive. The first one is going to be a CRK on the left here. Uh, this one, again, can be integrated with the 0.72 and 0.36 type motors uh, with or without gearing as well. We'll see very small, 1.14 inches height, 1.77 depth, and 2.56 wide, uh, very lightweight. Another option would be the CMK, and that would be used with the 1.8 degree and the 0.9 degree uh, type step motors. So 1.3 height, 2 in depth, and 2.6 inches wide. So again, very compact, very lightweight. Another application requirement might be smooth motion. So we saw with that demo previously that smooth motion really comes down to 
um, how far we're moving with each pulse. So the more I'm able to micro step, the smaller I make those pulses, higher resolution, the lower vibration that my motor is going to see. So a couple options here would be our RK, our CRK micro stepping uh, solutions. So in these drives, I'm able to choose up to a full, um, full stepping, which will give us 0.72 degrees with, with that motor, or we could couple these again with 0.36 degree motors, and then we cut all these in half. Um, but let's look at 0.72, and then I can divide all the way up to 250. That would give me 125,000 steps per revolution and very small amount of rotation per pulse. Um, this also utilizes what we call smooth drive. So if we give, when smooth drive is off, when you send it one pulse, um, you move a certain amount of degrees. When smooth drive is on, we send it one pulse, but then internally it's going to micro step. So that internal micro stepping is going to eliminate vibration, especially at those low speed ranges. So we'll see if this vi vibration is going to be cut out, uh, that resonance range right there where we get uh, the most vibration, that gets cut out with this smooth jive because we're going to internally micro step. Uh, advantage here is that you only have to input the, uh, the pulses as if you were full stepping, but with uh, smooth drive turned on, it acts as if it's micro-stepping. Another option would be our CRK Plus. So the RK and CRK are just drive solutions. The CRK Plus is going to be a motor, a drive, and a controller built into one, uh, one package. So you'll see the drive and controller uh, box right here. It's going to support RS-485 communication and I.O. control. Uh, 64 sequences can be stored inside this box here. And we're going to be able to do positioning, indexing type motions, uh, return to home, continuous motions. We can link motions together, and then we can also teach motions. Uh, this controller also has the ability to take an encoder input and then has a misstep detection. So it'll send you out a warning when you've, uh, when you've missed a step. We'll also have a very low vibration, low noise. This is going to, again, you can micro step this up to the 125,000 steps per revolution, uh, if you so choose. So that would allow for very, very low vibration, very smooth motion. And another advantage here is we have a pulse and direction output. So we'll have a, a drive connected to this, this drive controller. I'm sorry, we'll have a motor connected to this drive and controller. And then in addition to that, we can send pulse and direction out to another drive and have a motor follow the exact sequences that this motor and drive's controller solution would have. So very, it makes it very easy to synchronize two motions together. So if you have any questions on Oriental Motor Stepping Motor Package Solutions, feel free to give us a call. Tech support number is 800-468-3982. Or give us an email at techsupport at orientalmotor.com. Thank you.